Hey kids, it's Mr. Fly here. Very excited today because I'm on a bike that I've been wanting to ride ever since it came out. The bike that I'm reviewing today is the Ducati Super Sport S. As a Panigale owner, it's a bike that uh, I'm really interested to see how she performs because maybe this is the answer to having a uh, Ducati sports bike on the road. Stick around and stay tuned. So as I say, this is a bike that I've been wanting to ride for a while because I bought my uh, Panigale 899 because I thought it might be the great uh, answer to the problem of having an exotic sports bike on the road, uh, it being a slightly better mannered bike on the road than the uh, 1299. And uh, it has proven to be a lovely little bike, I absolutely love it. And then when uh, Ducati brought out this last year, the Super Sport, I thought, blimey, they've trumped me, they've brought out a bike that's exactly for somebody like me, somebody that wants a bit of exotica in the drive, or in the garage rather, uh, but also doesn't want a bad back and all the uh, you know the trouble that comes with owning an out and out uh, sports bike because this bike uh, the super sport is sort of a sports tourer well it is a sports tourer um, in terms of the riding position it's really quite comfortable in comparison to the panigale hello sir uh, in that the seat itself is hugely padded and much bigger it feels uh, you know cosseting on the back side which is nice and the handlebars as well although they look fairly aggressive they're not they're quite upright in fact you know, I can sit basically bolt upright if I want to. They're on these sort of uh, bar riser type affairs and it really does make for a much more comfortable ride. So it's quite odd for me as being somebody uh, who's very familiar riding my 899, this has got some familiar things about it but it's kind of different in a, in a weird way. Anyway, stick around and stay tuned and uh, I'll tell you what I think of this and how it compares to the likes of the baby Panigale. So once the initial uh, shock of the uh, <laughs> comfort on the bike gets out of the way, uh, I can start to think about what else is there uh, about the bike that I like and don't like. Well, there's a couple of things that strike me immediately. The first thing that strikes you, which really is a bad thing, are these mirrors. They look superficially kind of similar to the ones that are fitted to the Panigale, but my goodness me, they don't work anywhere near as well. The things, I don't know if you can see it, they just waggle around all the time. Here I am doing 30 miles an hour, and it's just this one on the right, which is the mirror you use a lot, of course, is just waggling around like nobody's business. At high speed on a motorway, that would be vibrating and would be next to useless. That is really poor. It's not just the right one, the left one's the same as well. They're on this some sort of rubber mount and it just moves around in a really low quality way. That is not what you expect of a premium bike like a Ducati. So that's definitely uh, a downside. Other than that, that's the only downside I've come across so far. The engine itself, being a twin, it's uh, fairly lumpy, but that is because it's a big old twin. I'm used to that. That's absolutely fine. It sounds very familiar to me, even though it's uh, this is not the Super Quadro engine that you get in the uh, Panigale. This is the, I think this is the Testra Stretta. I'll uh, check that when we do the walk round. But yeah, lovely riding position. The, uh, this particular model, as I say, is a Super Sport S. So what this gives you over the standard model is uh, Olin's suspension, which is uh, lovely, uh, and also the Ducati Quick Shifter, which is both up and down. On my Panigale, I've only got the up Quick Shifter, which is lovely. Uh, and on this, it's got both ways, as I say. And the, it works really nicely. It's one of the better Quick Shifters I've ever, ever come across. So that's a really nice addition on this bike. The other thing that's kind of similar but different to me is this display. Uh, it's a monochrome LCD, it's very clear though, clear to see, you've got everything on there that you need. Um, one of the things that's a bit odd about it, you can see I've got this light uh, here, that shows that I've got the daytime running light switched on. Uh, if I turn them off using this button here, there we go, now I'm just on normal low beam as you would normally ride a bike, that goes off. To me that's kind of counterintuitive and the wrong way around, but uh, I've seen a number of bike manufacturers do that now. I think notably Triumph do that on their new bikes as well. It just seems the wrong way around to me, but uh, that is correct, uh, and that is how it works, but just a bit of an oddity for you. In terms of seat height, it's lovely and low. Look, my feet are flat on the floor, both sides, uh, absolutely flat, so the bike does not feel at all unstable or unsafe. It's a very friendly bike to ride in that respect. Handling-wise, she really is lovely. <laughs> It's got plenty of go. If you wind the old throttle on, you're soon into uh, <laughs> license losing speeds. Very nice. For a bike that uh, Ducati were at great pains to say is not a Panigale and is not a sports bike, but is a sports tourer, it really is qu quite a beast. It's got plenty of go in this thing, don't worry about that. In terms of switch gear, it's got quite a lot of actual physical switches uh, on, this, on the uh, handlebars, which I actually quite like over having to go through menus and things on the display. Uh, and they seem quite nice big switches as well, quite tactile. 
uh, not quite as good as some of the Japanese manufacturers maybe but they seem you know better than things like um, maybe the KTM or BMW is what you see on those to access the engine modes on this you actually use the indicator switch you hold it down for a certain period of time and flick through them to be honest it's a little bit of a faff it's not Ducati sometimes do this it's not the easiest way to change engine modes um, but there we go that's just the way that they choose to do it the LCD screen itself is very clear and nice uh, and nice and easy to read and this little screen seems to work quite well it's also manually adjustable which is a nice touch you can't do it on the fly but uh, it's just a matter of pulling it up or down when you stood in front of the bike she sounds great and she goes really well handling on it is nice and steady it feels nice and uh, nice and planted in the turns it's not quite so um, you know, feeling like it might you know, throw you off at any moment, which <laughs> I sometimes feel my Panigale is a little bit like. Right, let's come up here and I'll just pull over on the side of the road and uh, I'll show you around this splendid bike and talk you through the spec as usual. This should do nicely. I'll just find neutral, there we go. And quite an easy stand to find, which is nice. Okay, there we go. Right, so here she is, the Ducati Supersport S. Uh, oh, and the other thing that the S model comes with is this um, seat cowl here as well, as the Olins and the Quick Shifter. All right, yeah, lovely, uh, a lovely looking bike, I think. Let me uh, get the other camera out, and I'll talk you through the spec in the usual way. Okay, so uh, hopefully you can see that okay. So yeah, when I first saw this bike at the uh, NEC last year, I was a little bit unsure whether I liked it or not, because it's got sort of... Uh, it looks kind of Panigale-ish at the front, and then when you sort of come down, it doesn't. It's got a completely different sort of nose, and as I mentioned, Ducati were at great pains to say when they launched this bike that it isn't a Panigale. It's in a, a kind of a class of its own. Uh, but the looks of it is certainly starting to grow on me. I have to say, I think it's a, a handsome-looking bike. Uh, so in terms of the engine, then, this is the 937cc Testa Stretta, as I mentioned. It's an L-twin uh, configuration. It's the same engine as they use in the Multistrada 950 and the Hypermotard. Uh, 939 puts out 110 bhp at 9000 rpm uh, whereas if you compare it against say the Panigale 959 which puts out 150 so this is a little bit down on power but uh, that's more than enough for the road I would say torque wise 93 newton meters at 6000 rpm so again nice and low down the range compared to the smaller Panigales which makes it again a much more accessible engine I think she looks great. I actually quite like the uh, exhaust on this, although they've not got the neat underslung ones like the original Panigales had. I think they've done quite a nice job with this arrangement. And also the single-sided swing arm I think looks fantastic. Just get out the road so I don't get killed. Uh, I think it'd need a tail tidy, but then don't all bikes. But yeah, nice, uh, nice looking machine and a little bit of uh, frame poking out there as well. It just reminds you that you're on a on a Ducati, which I quite like. Uh, in terms of braking, this one has got uh, the Brembos, the, the M432 four-piston calipers. Let's have a look down here and there as well. You can see the lovely Olin's metalwork on the front end. So top-notch brakes and suspension. Uh, the rear, um, oh, sorry, the non-S has Marzocchi forks, which, uh, you know, are not bad, it has to be said, and Saks rear adjustable um, suspension. On this one, the S, again, you've got Olin's at the back. I'll show you the adjustable reservoir there. So there we go, there's the little adjuster just at the back there. Looks all very lovely. Seat height on this, 810 millimetres, so, uh, but nice and narrow, so it feels very low actually, as I say, I can get my feet flat on the floor at 5 foot 8, so no problem there at all. Weight dry is 184 kilograms, again, compare that to the 959, which is 176, so it's only 8 kilograms heavier than the current 959, which surprised me a little bit. Uh, so, not super light this bike, but also not heavy either. In terms of uh, capacity, that tank looks nice and big, but actually uh, only holds 16 litres, so not huge. Uh, electronics are standard on this, it comes with riding modes, urban, touring and sport, traction control, ABS of course, uh, Ducati quick shift as I say on the S, and of course it's ride by wire as well. The price, 11495 for the standard bike, or if you want this one, the S with all the fancy suspension etc, you're looking at 12795 Depending on the colour, if you want to go for the white, for some reason Ducati charge you more. Uh, it's an extra 200 for that, not quite sure why. Service interval is 9000 miles, which is nice. Um, and yeah, I think that's probably pretty much it. You can get some accessories for this if you want to make it into a proper tourer. 
there are things like um, semi-rigid panniers uh, and stuff like that and I think I would also uh, put on a bit of a, a tank pad on here because I've got a feeling this paint on here is the unlacquered stuff again uh, so it might, it might do with a bit of uh, paint protection okay so uh, I think that's probably all there is for me to say about the bike for now let's uh, jump back on and ride her some more okay so let's get the show on the road again okay slightly different start button to one that I'm used to he says <laughs> wondering how it works oh there you go just hold it down there certainly sounds the business when you uh, when you start her up right nothing coming she's certainly got all the uh, Gigatti twin character about her and I say that in a good way because obviously uh, twin cylinder engines deliver their power in a particular sort of way and this is no different it's not uh, it's not the creamy smoothness you might get out of a four-cylinder bike but that's partly why I like Ducatis right, I'll just turn around here get back onto the main road yeah quick shifter on here works really nicely up through the gearbox let's just slow down yeah the auto blipper is nice as well that's a really nice addition to the bike and I think <laughs> that alone might be uh, reason enough to go for the S model brakes work really well as you'd expect with those big old Brembo calipers right let's just uh, open her up a bit yeah just because she's uh, a sports tourer doesn't mean she's a slouch goes really well there's plenty of power here for the road and because they've got all that torque just in the zone where you need it it's actually very very usable I like that there really is very little point in having a sports bike that's got 200 horsepower but you can't access it unless you're doing 120 you don't have that problem on this bike so it's lovely through these standard cans actually you can get I think it's Acropovix that you can get for this as a uh, official part but I'm not sure I'd even change them because I think these standard pipes look nice and they sound good. Handling's really nice on the bike, like that. Okay, so I must just uh, take this opportunity to thank Blade Motorcycles at Abingdon. It's uh, one of the local Ducati dealers, they are a multi-franchise place. They also do uh, Kawasaki's and also Harley Davidson. So if you're in the area, it's well worth popping in. Uh, say hello to the guys and have a look at uh, all the bikes there. They've got a massive stock. It's just one of those places that's quite a good place to stop by and have a look in got a really satisfying uh, pop about the exhaust when you slow down as well which is rather nice right, back around this way I think now she changes direction on a dime excellent okay so uh, I'm going to just summarize my thoughts on this then my first ride on the Ducati Super Sport S uh, which is uh, not a Panigale it's a uh, sport touring bike and uh, I have to say, Ducati have done a nice job on the comfort front. You can sit right up if you want to. The seat is lovely and padded. Uh, these bar risers mean that you don't have to stretch. It's just, it's a comfortable place to be. So certainly from that viewpoint, they've got it exactly right. It's a comfortable machine, much, much more comfortable than a Panigale to ride. None of the heat under the seat either. So they've got it right there. Um, the brakes work absolutely fantastically well. Unfortunately, the mirrors are abysmal. I have to say, this is something that is, there's no excuse for this. These need sorting out. It might just be, be this bike, but uh, but that is just not good. Uh, I find some of the switch gear a little bit uh, difficult to use, changing modes and things is a bit fiddly, which Ducatis have a habit of doing that, and also I don't really like the way this daytime running light has the, uh, is, you know, is kind of counterintuitive. There you go, let's get rid of the green light on the dash by pressing that again. Uh, but those are small niggles really. If you're after a bike that uh, gives you the, the fun of a sports bike with usable power, yet doesn't do your back in over long periods of time, then this is definitely one well worth considering. Uh, I think, if, particularly if you can only have one bike. For me personally, if I'm going to go touring, I think I like to do that on a more upright, proper touring bike with big panniers, something like a BMW GS like I own. And if I want to have a sporty bla blast, then I'm probably, again, going to want to do that on something like a sports bike, like an R6 or a Panigale or something. Um, so for me, this is a bit too much of a compromise in the middle of the two. But uh, I recognise I'm very lucky in that I can uh, actually, you know, afford different bikes for different purposes. Lots of people can only have one bike, and if you're only going to go down the one bike route, 
then uh, this is well worth considering if you're inclined towards Ducatis because it really is a nice piece of kit. It looks nice, it goes well, it sounds well and uh, it's really comfortable to ride as well. So that's just about it for this time. If it's the first time uh, you've been along to the channel and seen one of my videos, it'd be great to have you subscribe. Uh, I don't just do bike reviews, but I do trips and tours as well. I do how-tos, things in the garage, all sorts of bits and pieces. If you hit the subscribe button, it means that uh, you can get yourself notified and you won't miss any of the videos in the future. It'd be great to have you along. Okay, hope you've enjoyed that. Until next time, this has been the Mist and Fly. Cheerio.